London is already a world leader in many industries, including finance and fashion. And now it's gaining a reputation for scientific research and innovation too. I'm standing in front of the world's biggest biomedical research building project, the Francis Crick Institute. This is one of London's most active regeneration zones, just north of the British Library here on my left and beyond that St Pancras and King's Cross stations. And the Crick, as it's already being called, is undoubtedly the new standard bearer for London science. The government, two charities and three London universities are investing £650 million in the Institute where 1,300 scientists will work from 2015, addressing important issues in human biology. The Crick's chief executive is Sir Paul Nurse, Nobel laureate and president of the Royal Society. I asked him how London compared with his eight years in New York, where he was president of the prestigious research institute, Rockefeller University. In many ways they're rather similar. Big cities, very exciting, very attractive to people around the world. So I actually see many parallels. Where I think there's differences are that um, in London people will collaborate more readily and I really want to exploit that. In New York we had great scientists but it was often rather difficult to break down boundaries between different institutions who hang on to their resources rather tightly. So that was really one difference. London Mayor Boris Johnson recently said that London could become the leading science city on the planet and he's designated the area around the Crick Med City to match Tech City in East London. But Sir Paul Nurse thinks it'll be a while before London can rival the prowess of innovation clusters such as Boston or Silicon Valley in the US. He hopes that the Crick Institute will encourage investment in the capital and precipitate the growth of biotech companies and facilities to translate lab research into healthcare. It's a national institute which will serve the national biomedical research endeavour. We essentially see ourselves with a role to support other places throughout the UK. It'd be very difficult if we were placed somewhere else to do that because it would automatically become local. If it was in Birmingham or Edinburgh or Manchester, say, in London it can serve the national agenda much more straightforwardly. When it's finished, the Crick Institute will nestle among the world-famous attractions of London's science cluster, including this place, the Science Museum, and the Natural History Museum next door, as well as newer research labs and incubators for science-based companies. Next door to the Science Museum is Imperial College. This university, along with UCL and King's College, have been contributing to London's success as a science hub. Imperial is bursting out of its traditional campus in South Kensington and planning Imperial West, a research and innovation centre in White City. Imperial College has been enjoying growth over the last 10 years and it's something like 5% compound annual growth rate. And, you know, we are almost out of space on our core campus here in South Kensington. We also have five hospitals and our research capacity there is constrained now because we don't have enough space. So we're looking to invest in our own long-term future. Our plans are to develop a campus for innovation and translation at a scale that we cannot possibly do in our own footprints at the moment. And to make that a hub for collaboration and developing ideas to market that is of a scale that hasn't been seen in Europe actually. We're thinking that the whole totality of 25 acres might cost us somewhere in the region of three billion pounds to develop. But the amount of research funding going to the golden triangle of London, Oxford and Cambridge is viewed with mixed feelings elsewhere in the UK. The University of Manchester is one of the top UK universities for science. Its strong scientific reputation has been boosted by the Nobel Prize winning discovery there of graphene by Professor Andrei Geim, seen here at work, and Professor Kostya Novoselov. Graphene has been hailed as a new wonder material for the 21st century, and the £61 million National Graphene Institute is being built in the city. Despite the activity in Manchester, the university's Vice President for Research and Innovation 
feels that more scientific investment is needed in the north of England. If I take the north of England as a whole, you could take the, the, the N8, the eight most research-intensive universities in the, in the north. They account for about 12% of academic staff and 17% of funding. The Golden Triangle is about slightly more as a percentage of the staff and gets more, more than double the funding. So one could say, all right, they're very good, they win the peer review competitions, and there, there is a lot to that argument. But uh, we also have to consider what, what underpins it. In health in particular, there have been years of massive investment in the London region. And if you have that huge capital investment, it is hard for others to compete. I mean, the, the ratios are quite phenomenal, about a, a third of health spending is in London, about 5% in Manchester. London scientists would argue, however, that the capital has a global appeal unmatched by anywhere else in the country, which benefits the whole of the UK and indeed the whole world. This is Clive Cookson in London for the Financial Times.